सुरेश सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम गुड मॉर्निंग सर वेलकम सर यस मैडम कृष्णवेणी मैडम यस मैम गुड मॉर्निंग यस यस मैम सर जॉइन सो यू कैन स्टार्ट द सेशन यस मैम या गुड मॉर्निंग सुरेश सर यस मैडम गुड मॉर्निंग मैडम गुड मॉर्निंग मैम शैल आई स्टार्ट मैम यस मैम यू कैन यस या डिस्टिंग्विश्ड गेस्ट रिनाउंड इंडिविजुअल्स एक्सेलेंट विजिटर्स faculty members from the numerous engineering colleges and the institutions scholars and the students good morning to everybody best wishes for the day it gives me a great pleasure and joy to greet you all for today morning i krishnaveni assistant professor from department of ecs klef are delighted to invite you all for the third week online fdp program on research, research perspectives on ai ml data science and iot we are happy to announce that we have successfully completed the two week ftp and we are in a last week session in continuation we plan a national level full stack ai deep learning and fractional approach during the scheduled dates this all is we program in association with the academic staff college klef an excellent service strategy will emphasize providing the value to the guests and will be an emphasis for providing the quality to take this uh fdp and sttp to present the researchers with a leading multidisciplinary forum to learn about the latest breakthroughs trends practical issues and the research aspect aspects which are encountered in machine learning data science and iot so the so strongest the ma'am yeah the strongest barrier of the faculty he leads by example and the spokesperson of the day department uh, he administers the department and governs communicates accurately to the university policy which is all driven by the today's guest and the resource person dr e suresh babu sir he is a chod csc nit warangal so i take privilege to introduce a short note of about uh, suresh sir so he is an assistant professor department of computer science engineering nit warangal he he completed its uh, under graduation in 2003 from jntu hyderabad and he is a postgraduate complete he completed his post graduation in 2007 from vt university karnataka and he is a phd holder from jntu kakinada ap he taught different various subjects like data structures theory of computation compiler design c programming computer networks and network security he had over 20 plus publications in the reputed international journals and supervised over 5 uh, research scholars under his uh, guidance and he hold over four workshops and uh, different national and international workshops in the count of 11 workshops he organized under his supervision and he attended over 25 workshops at the national and international levels he held different projects of the ug pg and phds and may stands his scholars and the students at a higher position he he got different awards received from cia csi academic award for the paper presenter award for the international conference which is held in csi annual convention during 2018 at science city kolkata he received the best teacher award from kl university for the academic years 2015-16 and 16-17 by this all uh, the strongest profile and the uh, renowned person today i would like to invite dr suresh babu sir uh, to associate the participants by sharing his knowledge thanking you sir we request you for the uh, today's session sir uh, thank you very much madam for your nice brief introduction introducing me uh, thank i thank uh, i thank all the coordinators uh, for giving me this opportunity uh, right this is the third day i think no uh, this is the third day uh, this is a brief uh, program uh, uh, right i think uh, pardon me 
it is 15th, 15th day sir and two weeks already oh. completed oh good good uh, so i am the last person so i think a majority of the uh, participants are more uh, familiar than uh, uh, me because you are uh, come across uh, various uh, new integrated uh, technologies uh, as a part of the industry 4.0, we uh, like AI, deep learning, uh, uh, machine learning uh, applications, IoT, uh, data science. Uh, so there, there are a lot of things to be there because that's a big challenge for uh, uh, the uh, the faculty of uh, computers. Yes, sir. So so far, the sessions were covered in the areas of machine learning, deep learning, and the data science. Um, business intelligence, uh, IOD, uh, like that, sir. So today you are here uh, to handle the session. Thank you, sir. Suresh, sir, am I audible? Your voice is not audible, sir. Ma yes, ma'am. I'm just checking uh, whether sir is, is there, like, but... Hmm, yes, yes, available, but uh, somehow our voice is not audible. Yes, yes. Uh, seems to be there is a network issue with the sir and... Suresh Babu, yeah. sir. Hello, nobody also is Suresh Babu, sir, we couldn't be able to hear your voice, sir. Uh, Sagar, sir, can you please follow up, Suresh, sir, by making a call, sir? Yes, sir, I made a call. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Uh, and yeah, my session is all about uh, the Internet of Things. So I'm going to see uh, the, how this technology will play a vital role uh, as a part of the machine to machine communication or cyber physical system or industry 4.0. Uh, this is one of the important uh, uh, the technology that come across. Uh, even from last uh, seven to eight years, uh, maybe from 2015, uh, a lot of work is happening on IoT, uh, and the people were doing a lot of uh, projects. Uh, maybe undergraduate students they are taking small Arduino kit or Raspberry Pi kit, and then they are connecting to the cloud, uh, and how the data, real time data, will be uh, will be generated, and we are going to store into the cloud. Now, the question comes to you because uh, uh, when we have so many uh, uh, devices of different nature, heterogeneity, uh, it can be RFID tags or it can be near field communication or Zigbee network uh, or it can be Bluetooth network or BLE, Bluetooth low energy network we have. When all the devices are getting connected, the biggest challenge we have, how to ensure uh, certain issues were there, right? The, 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 there are certain challenges were there. Uh, one of the challenges is architecture. Uh, proper architecture is required because uh, when we talk about uh, the heterogeneity, uh, different technologies will be integrating as a part of the IoT. Uh, we require a proper hybrid of architecture. Suppose, for example, you take, I think most of the people are comfortable with computer network concept. 
No, it is very easy to tell the definition or of uh, the of how uh, the applications are using um, usage of computer network. But when it comes to that, when two autonomous devices were connecting each other without knowing each other, it's very difficult because we need to know the underlying challenges when you are connecting. Like, for example, how to identify a system, how to identify an application, how to identify a network, right? And how to how the communication is going to happen from one machine to another machine. What is the topology it has? So if we are going for two devices, now IoT, if we are going to connect millions of devices, which is very challenging, isn't it? So therefore, I'm going to emphasize on the architecture of IoT, on a, a hybrid architecture of IoT, so that it can be integrate multiple technologies. Okay. Uh, my, my my voice is audible, I think. Most of it is. Maybe sometimes um, breaking is coming, sir. It's, it's breaking. Uh, breaking is coming sometimes. Okay. Okay. Uh, my session will go like this. Uh, two hours session will go. Uh, Saka, sir, what is the break time? Any break time is there in the middle? No, sir. Continue. Uh, I'll take five minutes break uh, because. Uh, okay, okay. You want to take? Sir. Yeah, only for five minutes. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Right now, we are going to see here uh, what are the various trends and technologies uh, as a a part of the industry 4.0 or already initiated with 5.0 in some other countries. We try to see what are the various trends and technologies as this FDB is mainly known for integrating and knowing the multiple technologies. So we'll try to quickly review. May This may be the last day or 15th day, um, but not the least today. All right, and then how this mobile internet or the internet is playing a vital role or important role uh, in today's world that we are going to see and how it has become the part and parcel in our daily life. Uh, without internet, we cannot survive, uh, survive that that much uh, adapted. Uh, we adapted this to it. And uh, quickly, we'll try to see the statistics part and IoT concepts. Uh, then once we know the concepts of technical aspects of IoT, then we'll go for IoT architecture and then the challenges of IoT and applications of IoT which can come, up, can come across. Now, why I'm uh, emphasizing on IoT because if you want to implement something, for, for, for example, uh, first of all, we need to know the proper architecture, proper plan, overall plan uh, in order to organize. For, for example, if you want to have a test bed <coughs> of different devices, now if you want to connect it to the cloud, Cloud may, may be somewhere long, like latency problem will come into the picture, bandwidth problem will come into the picture. All right now, how to ensure one more device called fog device where we can be connected to all the edge devices? So, definitely, we require an architecture so that will give a lot of clarity how to assemble, uh, how to deploy, how to build the you know, IoT ecosystem. Right, there are some uh, technologies were there from 2015 onwards. We started enjoying the fruits of these technologies. Uh, very soon, I think um, maybe uh, we already trails were started in India uh, regarding this 5G network, which is one of the distributed network, right? Which is a faster network. We require a very fast network. Uh, that's 5G comes under this category. The next one, uh, people were talking about the cybersecurity and AI. See why I, I, I take it this as a separate entity, right? Uh, if, if you see AI now, now where we require now 5G requires AI, big data requires AI, uh, for computing requires AI, IoT requires AI. A question to the participants: Where we require AI? AI required in certain applications or in almost all the applications? Almost all, right? Almost all. Very good. absolutely. So see, for example, if you see, that's why if you take cybersecurity, cybersecurity is one of the essential component uh, for any technology. In order to make a successful story, we require a cybersecurity. So that is that cybersecurity is one of the uh, unusual ones. Similarly, AI is also a very imp important 
technology, or uh, we can call them as a ma mechanism, or it's a concept where we can apply for almost all the technologies. That's the beauty of that. Right. So what we are going to see here uh, is uh, these two are very, very, very important aspects of uh, any technologies which are going to come. Then we are talking about uh, big data because of big data processing, which is uh, very important and a big data analysis is going to be done, which is a very, uh, very much required as a part of the industry uh, 4.0, which you're going to have it. And then you are going to see an interesting one called, we are not interested with a digital currency, but the underlying technology of Bitcoin, it makes use of blockchain technology. This blockchain technology is started proving, now how can we ensure the cybersecurity problems, whatever we are facing now, how the blockchain is going to help uh, this cybersecurity. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of the interesting uh, area the people who have started working and uh, they started implementing industry took up this as a challenge and they started implementing this blockchain uh, for the IoT, blo 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 blockchain for the big data, blockchain for the fog computing, blockchain for uh, cloud computing and uh, blockchain for the 5G network, especially with respect to uh, cyber security. And then the next one is a very interesting one in automobile sector, vehicle to vehicle communication. A vehicle to infrastructure communication is one of the interesting area as a part of the cyber physical system uh, this assistant transport system will come into the picture the next one is industrial iot as uh, we know that uh, your internet of things will come under the category of uh, the cyber physical system or the industrial iot then one of the intelligent thing which you are talking about is robotic uh, robotics or intelligent devices See, now the question comes to when the devices nowadays, they are smart enough. Why they are smart enough? At the same time, they are high constant nodes. Means whenever they had a data, they will wake up and they will generate the data and then they will pass to the next level. And then whenever, uh, whenever they doesn't have any data, they enter into the sleeping mode, keeping in mind that someone will wake up. Right? The, the, why we call them as intelligent devices? Because we need to save the energy in these devices. At the same time, at, at the same time, we should have a lot of synchronization between the edge devices and the uh, middle level devices or middle layer uh, devices, which we have. So therefore, now, when we call them as a, a smart things, means when they respond according to the need of the particular application. Definitely, they are going to generate real time data, no doubt in that. And those real time data, what we're going to convert into non real time data. The biggest challenge what we have now, especially by, why we require AI principles, uh, principles is with respect to, to convert that real time data into smart data is we need to have a thorough concept on dynamic data analysis. Means we need to apply uh, this light weighted machine learning algorithms or light weighted algorithms, deep learning algorithms with respect to, to the devices which are there at the edge level. They cannot handle the uh, highly overrated algorithms, isn't it? So how to handle the real time data and how to convert that real time data into a smart data. That's the biggest challenge we have in future when the data is generating the, uh, um, uh, in reality. Okay. The next one is uh, at the edge compute, which is a very uh, interesting uh, uh, one. People have started working on this edge computing and fog computing concepts uh, uh, from 2013 Cisco was introduced along with Intel and some other companies they started uh, um, uh, introducing this edge computing process uh, where they can filter the data, where they can evaluate the data very effectively. And then of course, from last 15 years, we are enjoying the fruits of uh, this uh, high performance computing in the form of uh, cloud, uh, where it will store large amount of information and uh, user need not to worry about uh, how the data is going to store, only we are going to use those uh, uh, the features of cloud computing. And then, uh, as you know that, because you are already comfortable with uh, these uh, uh, principles of AI, uh, the principles of uh, machine learning, the principles of deep learning, which is uh, playing an vital role there. And then finally, we are going to have a distributed cloud, we can call them as one of the distributed cloud is a fog network, uh, where it will be there at the edge nodes, and this is a cloud network where we can have it. So in order to have 
a proper synchronization between these in order to store from that, we are going to use the, uh, the concept of FOCA. So that's a point which I uh, already I told you. There's a digital shop is every three to four years. The biggest challenge, especially with computer science, uh, electrical, electronic people, uh, is what is that? Uh, there is a shock waves will be there. Uh, what, why we call them as a digital shock waves in the sense you need to get updated. If you see, uh, maybe three years back, uh, we are talking about a wireless sensor network. We are talking about data mining principles. We are talking about image processing. We are we are we are we are we are, ta we are talking about a 4G network. Now after five after three to four years now uh, those uh, things are there, but we need to adapt it to the new things. Why? We, because the data is getting generating much faster rate. Now how to have a faster data? How to handle the faster data? So people were talking about for computing. Uh, people, people were talking about uh, the edge computing concepts. People were talking about uh, big data processing. People were talking about uh, big, data, uh, big data analysis. Right, people are talking about uh, the AI. Uh, people are talking about uh, the deep learning principles. So therefore, the business models has been changed every three to four years. The working style has been changed. So for example, this is the next example. Sitting at your own places and uh, listening the classes, no one has thought in this one and a half year will be adapted to the online teaching uh, that much fast. Right, and uh, e even we doesn't care in 2018, online classes means how it will be survived, but still, the reality in 2021 we are seeing right the working style has been changed now right even at a, what is the major problem is even if the institutions they will keep the classes at a 10 o'clock night also now you, we should be in a position to listen the classes that's an unfortunate thing we have the working style has been changed drastically and as already told you there is a, a disruptive technologies and evolving challenges we have as a part of the uh, digital shop it's, now, these are the, some of these uh, um, parts which you have uh, uh, distributed technologies like uh, safe quantum cryptography, additive manufacturing, cloud containerization, memory com computing memory, IoT and future network, which uh, we, which are going to call them as and cloud continuum. Uh, these are the and what are the challenges we have? We need to apply on our proper deep learning principles. There are so many algorithms for that. Now we need to apply for that. Idea of life has been changed. Security is the biggest challenge. Data is much faster. Identity and privacy is the biggest concern we have, right? So we need to find the new solutions along with these technologies whatsoever we are. Uh, if you see the evolution of this industry, the 1.4 to 4.0, when we see in industry 3.0, majority is all about uh, the computers and the internet is all about the information age and the automation age right we are giving a lot of emphasis uh, by the information right now the industry 4.0 is all about intelligence intelligent decision making right so for that they started introducing a new technologies like big data AI, and the type which is the past of the industry of 4.0 Okay. Now, uh, I want to ask a simple uh, question to the participants in order to make it interactive. Bluetooth, you come across Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy. Uh, what is this Bluetooth low energy? PLE. What is that Bluetooth and Bluetooth energy? Which is a widely used IoT device, is that? Anyone? Anyone? Lose, uses less energy, right? Comparatively, we, we can have a, a very good. It's an infrastructure less network or infrastructure network? It requires any base station. Infrastructure less. Yes, it's 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 an infrastructure less network. Why? In the sense, it doesn't require anything. A device uh, can form. Uh, thanks to the um, new, um, new technology that was introduced in Bluetooth is Bluetooth Smart and Bluetooth uh, Low Energy, where uh, uh, 200 to 500 nodes can be connected, uh, connected uh, which consumes less energy. That's why Bluetooth Low Energy is it is required. I don't think so, sir. Sir, it, is, it doesn't require any base station. It's something like a master and slave. 
right um, who want to communicate that will become a master and the remaining people seven nodes uh, can be a slaves and the remaining uh, 200 park nodes can be there uh, in bluetooth but it comes to the bluetooth energy we can connect to 200 nodes where it is very useful uh, like bluetooth enabled sensors we can call them as or uh, bluetooth enabled uh, rfid tags we can call them as uh, which which we can have it yeah, 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 yeah. Infrastructure less network is a part of the um, Bluetooth uh, personal area network. Okay, right. Now, if you observe here carefully, uh, Bluetooth, what we have, uh, Bluetooth with smart hubs. These are all two important aspects. Bluetooth, uh, definitely it is very cheap and it can be integrated in every device we can have. It is just relates, we can relate uh, to the ranging from larger things or small size things or, or tiny things which you are going to be connected. Right now, see, when we have such type of uh, importance, uh, now a lot of things need to, need to be there, uh, right? Uh, a few people will connect it at Zigbee nodes, a few people will connect uh, Bluetooth nodes, and a few, a few people will connect it uh, of the uh, active sensor, active tags, or active passive tags, or the combination of these categories, okay? Now, if you see from last 40 years, slides are not visible. Hello? Visible, sir. Visible. Sir, visible, sir. Okay. Uh, one question asked by some. Yeah. Uh, Praveen Kumar uh, Gupta, sir, uh, actually Bluetooth works with Bluetooth radio. Separate uh, radio will be there, 802.15.1 physical radio, right? It's not about uh, uh, um, infrastructure. There's two types of categories of networks were there, infrastructure network, infrastructureless network. Now, if you take your Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi does require infrastructure, means base station, all right? Whereas a Bluetooth doesn't require any base station. If you, even if you go um, uh, nearby and you can still pair with the other devices where it doesn't require any infrastructure. All right, there is a Bluetooth radio will be there, physical radio and Bluetooth baseband will be there. Now using that Bluetooth only, it, it's, it's work like a host as well as a router. You're able to get it? Already the Bluetooth 5.0 is there, sir, with the more uh, um, range. They're talking about uh, with respect to the range, with respect with respect to the speed. Uh, they, they, they started working on that. They're definitely, we are going to see very soon. Already it's there in uh, some of the mobiles. But Bluetooth 4.3 current, I think, uh, 4.3 version they're using now. Bluetooth 5.0, they have been under testing and a few mobiles, they started using this 5.0. Now, when we see from last 40 years, whatever we have, uh, we are talking about the individual technologies. I think you will be, suppose, for example, uh, one faculty will be the master in the image processing, one faculty will be the master in data mining, one, one faculty will be the master in uh, one minute. So, uh, individual persons will be uh, will be expertised in their area, but uh, uh, if you see the industry 4.0 or if you see the latest technologies, now multiple technologies uh, uh, specialization is required. Right? Uh, suppose, for example, I'm good in IoT, but I may not have some, uh, zero no, uh, knowledge on cloud computing, which is very difficult to uh, integrate these two. Or if you have a if you have a data, then if you are not processing the data, then definitely it is the biggest challenge we have. So there will be, therefore, most of the people they started working on um, using this um, multidisciplinary because multidisciplinary within the group and interdisciplinary also. 
right, uh, to work on this. So, so therefore, uh, this information technology, whatever we are talking about, it requires multiple technologies integration, right? Uh, multiple technologies integration, which we are going to call the mass bot uh, here uh, as a part of the industry, industrial internet of. <clears throat> so, uh, the future innovation which we are talking about is uh, IoT, which is uh, new. Th though it's not a new because people were talking about uh, uh, this is a new. No, it's a network of things, uh, network of smart things we can call them as. Uh, IoT is also called as network of uh, smart things which are being really connected to the internet. And then cloud, we already know that. And uh, we are using uh, big data processing and big data analysis. And then we have AI principles that will be the future innovation. Why? Because the data explosion, the real-time data which has been generated in 2020 is enormous. It's very huge. We can have it. So it's, it's, it's a very huge. Uh, then already we know that in 2003 or something uh, in uh, three itself, uh, the people are behind the devices which you are going to have. We see almost 50 billion, uh, 5 billion devices shipped in 2017. And then almost uh, 50 billion devices are already connected to this one. So therefore, there are a huge volume of uh, devices are connected. When devices are connected, we are going to generate a large volume of data. Right? We need to process it. We need to analyze it for efficient decision making. That will be the future innovation. Right. And why we came in such a long way from last 60 years? We have seen a lot of technologies. Right. Now we'll try to see how this one uh, with the uh, computer uh, or computing uh, level and uh, which you're going to come across. Uh, if you have a mainframe, usually one for enterprise we have. And then uh, mini computers, usually we have one per company. And then workstations uh, will be one per engineer we can have. And then we have a personal computer, which is for one for family. And a desktop, definitely, it is one for professional. And even we can have more than one of that. And the smartphones are usually one per person, but it may, may not be necessarily true. We can have more than one smartphone. But can you predict one more? What is the next one, uh, which is started in 2010 onwards? Anyone? Embedded processor, okay. Raspberry, okay. It can work like a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry device. Roads, okay. Tablet PC, yes, this is like your smartphone also comes under the tablet PC or desktop PC, which you come across, which is going to come across. Right. So the next which we are talking about, why these things, why the IoT is playing an important role here in this is because of the smart sensors. The smart sensors which are available, yeah. Now those are all quantum computer, quantum computing, those are all computing areas we have. We, we are talking about the smart sensors. The smart sensors which are connecting to the device and it's going to uh, we call them as the intelligent devices these de intelligent devices will generate real-time data and that real-time data into we need to convert into a smart data which we have so because of this uh, the smart sensors we have and then 100 to 1000 sensors per person we can have then how to handle such type of sensors is the biggest challenge Do you have any doubts before I go into the technical aspects of uh, IoT? Doesn't have doubts. 
then we'll go into the technical aspects of uh, some iot concepts so that uh, uh, if anything has been if everything has been covered uh, i think any basis has been covered please let me know so that uh, there will be no redundancy in concepts right now as already told you now where we can use this iot uh, this is a question to the participants where we can use this iot in which sector if you see here we can use iot everywhere right therefore it is called as the internet of everything someone will uh, has called it. because uh, if you see in um, civil structure energy consumer of home right healthcare industrial transportation retail security and public safety it network we have so in almost all the sector we are using iot so therefore this brings uh, most of the most of the things are very close to the nature right we can use in agriculture sector uh, we, 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 we can we can we can uh, uh, use in industrial sector we can use everywhere uh, everywhere so therefore definitely the iot is one of the interesting technology where we can work it out on that and then we can make the man and the nature very close together right so that's it but if such a uh, interesting technology then comes uh, then what is the major challenge we have we don't have the definition universal definition they have their own definitions so if, you, if you see i2 has given its own definition esgi is, is given its own definition all right uh, uh, intel has given its own definition cisco has given its own definition maybe the definitions may be different but the technically they are a little bit same somewhat uh, we'll try to see rather than going into the technical definitions it's a three key uh, it's a three keyword letter we have iot is a three keyword letter the first one is the internet the second one is the things the third one is the data which are three important aspects we have the first one is internet as we know that because uh, we are enjoying the fruits of internet for 30 years uh, with this um, uh, internet aspects whatever we are coming across there's so many things uh, being evolved uh, in the internet like uh, for example if you see now uh, currently 5g we are using lte advanced we are using we are using cellular network uh, with the uh, cellular network we use uh, 2g we are using uh, we are using wimax right we are using dash 7 Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, ultra wide band, Z-Wave is a proprietary technology for home automation, Zigbee, six low power and IPv6 low power personal area network, near field communication, RFID attached. These are all which are the part of the each are the internet which you are going to be connected to the network technology. And then we one of the interesting with why we are interested with IoT is because of the personal area network. A lot of personal area aspects will be there. LAN, MAN, and WAN, which you are going to have. So if you see here, uh, I want to connect all the things. Now, previ previously, what we are doing here, IOP, internet were used by the people, and it has been replaced with uh, IOT. This P is replaced with things. If you can call it. Now, IOT connects uh, all the things, so therefore it is called as an internet. This is connected, this is connected, and this is connected, and this is connected. All these devices are The next one is the things. Now, when we talk about, see, uh, the things of high computing, we need not to worry about that. But the things, so smart sensors are tiny things, and these things are called as, a, uh, what we can call them as what? Uh, high constant nodes. Why they are called as high constant nodes, anyone? The things are high constant nodes, especially in, uh, in IoT terminology. Sagar so, sir, my voice is okay, no? There is no break in the voice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, why things are high constraint? Because we know that here, uh, the size is very limited. The sensor node sizes are very limited in nature. If you, if you observe here carefully, this, the size is uh, very limited in nature we have. Then CPU power processing power is limited. That they are limited in nature. Then memory is uh, only a few tens of kilobytes it can be handled. 
right whenever it has the data it will show that it, it cannot store the data and then bandwidth so biggest challenge we have only uh 250 kilobytes per second as per a normal rate they are very low nowadays and the major critical aspect is the power consumption we we, we need to always save uh, these things now uh, you have come across i think uh, the fast tags no uh there are active tags or passive tags they are using we have a fast tag uh, concept uh, uh especially for implementing uh, there are active tags or pa passive tags we have Passive, very good. See, at active tax does require the uh, battery, and it is very, very difficult to uh, provide the uh, um, um, uh, uh, battery for that. But, but therefore, they started using passive tax a lot, um, where uh, it makes use of the reader to make use of that. So, therefore, the power consumption is a very critical and uh, definitely in such type of things. And uh, of course, uh, though the though with these constraints, uh, but uh, they are known for generating a large volume of uh, data. Now, if you see here, there is an interesting one. Suppose, for example, we have a smart refrigerator. But this is a smart uh, uh, refrigerator we have. Whenever a mobile device enters into the proximity range uh, of this um, uh, smart refrigerator, immediately it will send the uh, Benson message, a Benson message that uh, to the mobile device, the mobile device will work like a, a mobile gateway right the mobile gateway when it will receive the message through app through smart app it, it will, the user can view don't forget to buy email now what is happening here uh, it's uh, something a new interesting one because the, the smart device will interactively intelligently autonomously interacting without the need of the human being right that's what we call them as a smart device why this is a smart device because whenever it, it, it whenever it detects the proximity of this uh, mobile device immediately it will send a message right it will it will send a message it can be both, both can be a bluetooth enabled devices right Blu um, bluetooth enabled devices through bluetooth only the communication can be happened or so some through some communication uh, protocol it is going to be happen, right so what is here it is happening it is interactively autonomously and intelligently they are going to process the data they are communicating the data And the final one is the data, right? Now, my question to the participants, the IoT data is a static data or dynamic data? Very good. So the data is because the data which we are getting uh, from the real-time sensors from the physical environment, it's a real-time, right? We cannot, we, we, though we, we once we store that real time data into the cloud and then uh, we are going to process the data now the biggest challenge especially the industry is uh, putting a lot of effort is how to process the real time data dynamic real time data at the edge node itself at the edge node itself so therefore the data which we are getting it's a real uh, in value data but at the same time at the same time what is a lot of redundancy will be there um, and the data which is generating much faster, the cloud is able to handle that. That's the biggest challenge we have. Okay. Once we have a data, because the things will generate the data, and this data will be carried over internet, and we can process the data at the cloud level, and we can get this. So we need to uh, analyze the data. Therefore, we can say uh, rather than uh, uh, this IoT, it's something like what is that? Intelligent connectivity of the physical devices right intelligent connected of any physical devices that can increase the um, um, uh, definitely a business growth the quality of life and then at the same time the efficiency can be increased so this is uh, some um, technical aspects of uh, this uh, the iot uh, uh, okay uh, before i go to this one do you have any doubts on uh, the previous slide
Right. Now, if you see here, because we are going to call them as a wireless sensor network, it's a big area, right? Uh, we have a wireless sensor network and we're using a lot of gateways, right? And we can use some routers concept, what we have it. Or we, we can use uh, IoT cloud platform or we, have, we can have so many applications. So when you talk on IoT, there's some multiple components or multiple uh, technologies which will play a very, very, very important role in the IoT platform. If you take any IoT platform, it is not that much easy to integrate it. So therefore, what we need to have, we require a proper architecture, right? Now, which one need to use after which? Uh, uh, the integration is very, 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 very important part here we have. So therefore, for that, we are going to see one reference model. Of course, there are so many architectures were there in the literature, like ITU has proposed, uh, International Telecommunication Union has proposed its IoT architecture, or uh, ESTI has proposed its architecture we have, uh, mission to mission um, level alliances, they have proposed their own architecture. Zigbee has proposed its different architecture uh, for the IoT, which you're going to have it. But we are going to see one of the reference model we can call them as. This reference model can be used for different category of IoT for building a different IoT ecosystem. And it's a seven level model. And each level, again, it is category as a stack of sub layers. We can use a stack of sub layers also. The first one is what uh, from top to bottom we have the physical devices and controllers. The second category is the connectivity, which is hot, right? And the third category we have the edge computing or FOC. Now this is a new one, which you're going to have it, though, though it's not a new one, though it's a uh, old technology in networks we use called as a mobile edge computing, mobile edge computing concept. Now mobile edge computing will be done at the edge levels device. So uh, the fog computing is another uh, other one, and uh, uh, cloud computing we call them as a data accumulation and data storage, and we need to make data ready. This is a part which is coming from the device part, and uh, we need to go to the upper level, the user level, user oriented level. Slide is not changing. Nagi sir. Now someone is uh, told slide is not changing. Reference model is showing, sir. I want to hold forum reference. Yeah, yeah, reference model I'm showing. Yes, uh, that is only displayed. Okay, okay, then, okay, right. Then we have uh, data abstraction, means because our main photo is to for, we are going to keep data ready uh, to the uh, to the upper person, to, to the people, uh, so that they can use for efficient decision making, we have it. Because we don't know from where the data, because the data can be stored at different data centers, uh, the data uh, database, we need to bring, we need to process that, and we need to keep the data already, all right? And then there is another one, interesting one, left side we have, this is the OD data, operational technology data we have, it, right, which is generated by the devices. And this IT data we have. So therefore, that the, the data which is uh, which is maybe it may be query based, and we are going to convert it into event based, and from event based to we are going to convert it into a query based. And then if you see here at the right side, data in motion, because the data is going to travel, data in motion, and we are going to store it at the cloud. We call them as a data at rest, and this type of data is called as a real time data. And then when we are storing at a, a rest, then it's called it comes under the real time, non real time data. We have. So this is a seven level model. Definitely again, we can dig each and everything is again one research area. Each level uh, integrating of connectivity and physical is one category. Then how to integrate it, how to integrate it, how to integrate it. It's the biggest challenge we have. Okay. So this is a uh, process layer in IoT we have. If you observe here carefully, the 5G network, which you're going to have it. Uh, this can be, again, we can use local area connectivity. We can use a lot of network technologies here like this. A uh, lot of network technologies we can use uh, like Bluetooth, Bluetooth, low energy, uh, right? Uh, Zigbee we can have, okay? Uh, we can have Zigbee, RFID, or near field communication. All these things can be a part of this. All the devices can be connected as a network technologies. Or we can use LoRaWAX, uh, LoRaWAN, and ZigiFox uh, uh, wide area network connectivity can be also be used. At the edge, we have devices, uh, sensors, and the edge computing, we have a data element analysis and transformation. 
and then we have data integration which is a cloud infrastructure data analysis can be done applications and people as well as the process we have right <clears throat> The first one, the first level is the physical devices and controllers we have. First one is uh, we can go for uh, analog to digital conversion as required. The main responsibility of these devices is to generate the data. And when there is a need of, we can we can go for query or control over the network. As already told you, it ranges from large devices or to tiny devices we can have. These devices, it's a part of uh, uh, we can come to the we, we can call them as a general devices, data carrying devices, data capturing devices we have. So, so many devices of different classifications are there. Still, we can connect it to the internet. The second one is like very, 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 very important one is the internet connectivity, network connectivity we can call it. And it is heart of IoT we can have. Now, when it comes to this connectivity level, there are so many functionalities that we need to take into consideration. The first one it includes because we need to have a communication. Someone will call them as a mission to mission communication. Means I want to perform mission to mission communication like in this level, in this level, or I want to convert to the top level also. So between the levels, I need to communicate or with the, with, with, the, uh, with or between the levels of level one and level two can be communicated. So therefore mission to mission, it can be happen. Mission to application can be happen. So how to provide such type of communications? What are the integrated problems, integration problems we have and how to provide these solutions for those problems? The second uh, category is reliable data delivery across the unreliable network. Now, IoT is unreliable network or reliable network? Unreliable, unreliable or reliable? I don't think so. How it will be reliable when the nodes will be in sleeping mode? When these nodes are sleeping mode, right? They will be in sleeping mode. They will not be active always. There, there may be chances of maybe a battery is drained and it is dead. In a, 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 a data carrying devices is there. Now, always it is not possible, especially by the wireless networks which you are talking about, they are unreliable network. Right? They cannot be reliable, isn't it? Now, for example, you take a, you take a baby. Now, see, when you are connecting sensor nodes or a field, definitely it will not be wired because a lot of infrastructure is required. It requires, it, if you want, you can have money. But the question comes to you because when we are placing, when we are deploying thousands of sensors, it should be of wireless nature, not of wired, because a lot of infrastructure is required there. You got my point? When we talk about these sensor networks are connected, it should be a wireless sensor network. Wired, it is required, but a lot of infrastructure to overcome the problem only. We'll go for wireless sensor networks concepts. Hello, you're able to get my answer. Yeah. So therefore, what we have our unreliable network. How to ensure reliable delivery? That's the biggest challenge we have. This network connectivity level need to take care of that. The third one is implementation of various protocols because now the legacy protocols, the already existing protocols, they are mainly appropriate to have for the IoT devices. That's the biggest challenge we have. Now, IoT devices are um, high constant nodes, which we discussed previously. Now, the routing mechanisms or the various protocols, like we cannot use HTTP, HTTP protocol, uh, uh, especially in these devices. So, therefore, people have started uh, introducing a COAPI, constant application protocol, or MQQT protocol. Oh, why? Because we need to require lightweighted uh, protocols it will, where it will not consume a lot of battery energy. And then a lot of switching and routing mechanism is required. Therefore, they started introducing uh, um, new routing protocols like for RPL. RPL is nothing but routing protocol for low power and lossy networks we have. And then we have a translation between the protocols, which we're going to have like your gateway. 
lot of gateways which we're going to use it. Uh, the translation between the protocols which you're going to have it. Yes, point to point protocol is also there. Okay. Uh, point to point is uh, a very interesting uh, one uh, which we can use in uh, IoT also, man. Right. The security at the network layer is a very, very, very essential component uh, that need to be addressed. This is another one. And if you see self learning network analytics, means if we can use here, uh, what we can use, we can, we, we can use. Uh, uh, right, machine learning and deep learning principles, especially to learn the network to make some packet inspection can be happened very effectively here. So for that purpose, uh, we can uh, go for uh, self-learning network analytics can be easily implemented. Okay. All right, um, uh, uh, Sagar sir, can I have five minutes break? Uh, before I go to the edge computing level. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Yes, madam. Five minutes break. Shall I? I'll take it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, participants take five minutes break and be back by 11 five. Sure.
Participants, uh, we had given a five minutes of break. That's why there is a no audio and video. Please be with us. Thank you. Okay, madam, I'll start now. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Madam. Yeah, thank you. Right. Now, now the third one is the, the edge computing level. The first two, the objects or object abstractions, uh, because when we devices and if we take any device, does device have uh, different types of modules like power module will be there, Wi-Fi model will be there, memory model will be there, and process model will be there. So these two usually the objects and uh, the physical devices and uh, the connectivity usually they are the part of uh, one category which you have, and a lot of protocols will come under the picture. The next one is the service management. Uh, this uh, level three comes under the service level, the service management, and it has been introduced explicitly for the to in order to handle the IoT devices that is called as the edge computing level. It means why can't we process the data at the edge level itself? Or why can't we process the uh, data, um, which is very close uh, to the um, the devices, so that uh, we can get uh, the fine-grained data, or we can get, we we can uh, get get, get um, uh, this normalized data, and we can store into the cloud for effective processing, and it it can reduce the load on the data processing also. So therefore, uh, which we're going to see here. Uh, the third category is what uh, we call them as what the uh, edge uh, computing. Uh, my slides are visible, no? Yeah. Now, if you see here, now whatever we have is the devices will generate the data much faster than I do. Right? Whatever the devices which are connected to the internet, and it's going to generate huge volume of data. So devices will generate the, the data than ITs can invest it. IT means your cloud computing is able to handle it. So the cloud computing, though it's good enough to handle, but it's not capable of performing the real-time data analysis and feedback cannot be done. That's a major problem we have now, isn't it? Of course, there are some advantages were there when we are integrating the IoT devices to the cloud. The user need not to worry about those device, their data because the already disconnected, the data is available, it will be stored into the cloud. We have. I don't know what is that. Uh, please keep enlarge the slide in a sense. Slideshow, it is not showing. I already mentioned the slide show only, no? Let me see one second. Okay, okay. Now see here, we have uh, uh, what we have in the sense, uh, we have a web-based data that is called as IT data, uh, where 90% of the data was created in the last two years. And then IoT data, which is a world, uh, physical world-based, which you're going to have it. 
Now, whatever the data which is coming from these devices, definitely the biggest challenge, what is that data transfer cost we have? Right, and the, the other problem we have is what a physical uh, shortage of uh, storage, storage shortage we have. Right, um, usually the cloud were used to handle the IT data like from web pages, uh, web servers, uh, uh, the data which is coming. So they're, they're, they're known for that. They are not used, uh, habituated to store the IoT, uh, IoT data. Right now, the biggest challenge we have is how to handle this uh, OT data, which you're going to get uh, from a large amount of data, which is going to be from, get from the IoT devices. So if you take, for example, an airplane has multiple terabytes of data per hour, and then store the, storing all the data permanently in the central storage, like in the form of cloud, is the biggest problem. And sending to uh, IoT application is the biggest challenge we have. Okay, not you, you, if you take the airplane. Now, if you take a vehicle, vehicle is going to generate some petabytes of data, which you're going to have. It. Now, we cannot store all the dynamic data about uh, to the cloud, and uh, cloud will send to a particular application. We need to process the node at the edge level itself, or uh, to get the fine grained data we have. So that's some some technical aspects uh, challenges were there with respect to, to the cloud computing. The data from the OT is too much of data to handle, which we are going to have. It. Then next one is latency is the biggest we have. The latency when we are having uh, when we are connecting. Uh, sorry. Uh, the latency is the biggest challenge we have when we are connecting IoT data with uh, this one. and the transportation cost or bandwidth cost is too high right when we are uh, using and then uh, practical resiliency will be there these are the four uh, challenges we have uh, especially when we are integrating the cloud computing and the high now how to handle such situation so therefore uh, we know that uh, when we studied uh, this uh, wireless sensor network concepts uh, there's a lot of uh, algorithms were uh, out um, minimize the, the data and how to uh, do some data aggregation and we are so we are going to send to that data to the cloud so minimizing the data before by extracting and sending the context which is a, a little bit interesting one so for that what we are going to use it we are going to use some interesting one called the edge computing or fog computing we are introducing the role of fog cloud uh, big data and ai will be the uh, uh, these things. So therefore, the edge computing means why can't we process the data at the here itself before we send uh, to the cloud computer? So therefore, once we get this data, will be a fine grained data. Now, a fine grained data definitely a big data uh, is good enough uh, to process it, and uh, uh, we can apply some AI principles, uh, deep learning principles, AI principles for effective decision making. Okay. As already told you, because AI is uh, uh, an individual component, individual technique and methodologies, which you can use it. Uh, we need, we can apply this AI principle in, in all the level. We can use uh, security along with the security, cyber security also can be used in all the levels here. Right, we, we, we can use at the edge level, we can use at the uh, edge computing level, cloud level, data analysis level and application level. Still, we can use the uh, that's an appropriate solution we can have, right? But uh, the providing uh, the uh, deep learning here is a little bit challenging because these devices uh, are lightweighted devices. Uh, we cannot apply the same conventional algorithms, uh, um, uh, you know, whatever the algorithms we have. We cannot apply the same deep learning algorithms or machine learning algorithms because of the high constant nodes we have. So therefore, why we need uh, to have, because uh, the main purpose is uh, we are going to connect millions of devices of different of different categories where the response time should be minimum. So therefore, we are introducing that uh, we are introducing a edge device, uh, edge device or fog device where tens and thousands of devices can be there. And then we are going to have thousands of uh, devices where your core network will come into the picture. Right. And finally, we have a cloud devices where data centers and uh, it will be there with hundreds of devices. Now we are, we are interested with this. Right. Okay. 
Okay. Now, what we are doing here in the conventional IT data processing, we have a data. We have a lot of data sets. And what we are doing, we are doing at the high level processing. For that, what we do is we are going to store in the form of cloud. We are processing, then we are analyzing, and then we are using. Now, IoT is a totally different category because we know that the data is dynamic and it generates huge volume of data, whatever it has, it will generate it. And processing the data, storing the data, right, and taking appropriate decision making a little bit challenging here. So for that, what we are going to use, it's a, a cloud level, a cloud um, edge computing level concept will be introduced as a part of that. So that what we are going to use, we try to use a lot of data filtering concept, cleaning process, that aggregation process can be done. Packet content inspection need to be there where we can apply your ML principles. We are going to use network level and data level analytics can be done here. What is the threshold? The threshold factor will come into the picture. Data generation. So our main motto here, whatever the data packets that are coming from the edge devices, the main motto to perform some uh, functionality here, and then we are going to use what the in, in information understandable um, uh, concept in, 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 in information understandable concepts, which will be available to the higher levels. That's the main responsibility of this introducing new level that's called as the edge computing. Okay. So if, if you see here the difference between we have a IoT device, it can be Raspberry Pi. We have an edge device, it can be uh, some uh, Arduino kit, we can have it. First level of processing, the data is available, we can process here and we'll send to the edge fog node, we'll process the data here and then we'll send it to the cloud node, we'll process the data. So rather than having one level of processing, we'll do three level of processing so that there will be, we are going to get a three levels of uh, uh, the level of processing that can be done only fine grained data can be easily stored here. Okay. Now, if you see here, this uh, diagram will parity. We have a device. What we'll do? We'll evaluate and we'll filter. We'll do some aggregations. There's so many protocols were available. We need to apply some new protocols also as required. Communicate, uh, communicate with the device. And then we are going to have transform to the canonical format. That's very thing. Store as a uh, time and series of the data. Then we are going to send to the data centers. And finally, we are going to store into the uh, cloud. So this is a way that IoT data processing can be done very effectively when we introduce uh, one more level of data processing called the edge computing or FOC. This is a way which we can use it. Devices, all the devices, and these are the edge nodes, which are these devices can be connected to that. We'll extract from any source, any protocol, and normalize it. And the third step, which is nothing but fog nodes, your mobile computing, mobile nodes, which is good enough, where we can use it. And we are going to send to the data centers. From that data data centers, what we can do, we can send it to the data sharing. Uh, we we know that once we once the data available at one data centers from that we can also use call as a backend data sharing. That backend data data sharing can be uh, done very uh, e easily using from one cloud to another cloud. Okay. The next one is uh, data accumulation, which we are going to see uh, the uh, data accumulation level or uh, cloud. Uh, level which we can happen. Now in the data accumulation level, now our main motto is to have from query based to event based and event based to a query based generation we have. It. So for that, the main responsibility of the functions functionalities of this level is converting the data in motion into data at rest. We have, it, right? And then we are going to convert from data packets to relational databases. And we are going to achieve the transition from event based to query based computing. And then you see here, it is drastically reduces because the data is coming from the edge computing. Definitely the data, whatever it is coming, it is a fine grained data, a cleanup data, a fine filtered data which you're gonna have. So through filtering and selective storing of information can be stored definitely in the cloud storage, right? So therefore it is not only reduces the um, um, uh, redundancy, 
but also we can process the data and we can make efficient decision making and we can make the data ready uh, to the end user for efficient decision making intelligent intelligent okay that's the third category and then uh, we have uh, the fourth one is the data abstraction that data abstraction is nothing but uh, uh, how to analyze this data which you're going to have to use. So for that, what we need to create, we need to create a lot of schemas. We know that already we are using a lot of mechanisms of uh, views of the data as uh, uh, according to the need of application, uh, we will we, we'll make the data ready. Right, so that's a point which we need to have. And we, we are going to combine from multiple sources because uh, the data cannot be stored at one place. It will be stored at multiple data centers. So we need to go for how to have uh, uh, this uh, multiple sources. Uh, and we are going to simplify the application. We'll do a lot of again filtering, projecting, selecting, reformatting the data according to the client application we have. And then we need to reconsole the in from different shapes, formats, even access control mechanisms, semantics, and security can be provided at the, this level we can have. Okay. So this is about data abstraction. And from level one to this level, it's almost device oriented. I, they, um, uh, we can also call as uh, uh, we we are making data ready uh, to the end user for making the efficient decision making. Yeah, uh, Papa, this sir, I think uh, the edge computing complements the now your edge is a uh, centralized system or decentralized system. Uh, so the cloud is a centralized system or decentralized system currently. Currently, it is a centralized system because we know that. Now, what we do is we are going to distribute it. We are going to distribute as a fog network where that one fog network will be connected to the uh, cloud network. So therefore, uh, these dev if the devices uh, here, this is one network we have. This is a fog network. Like, for example, this is a Zigbee network, which is a fog network. Now, in this Zigbee network, we call them as what well, PAN coordinator will be there. PAN coordinator and uh, thousands of uh, edge nodes will be there. And these edge nodes will be controlled by this one. And this fellow has the capability of uh, performing from this data and sending to the cloud. Right? So therefore, uh, well, the edge computing, edge, uh, edge, edge nodes, so edge networks will be at the edge level, which will form a small network. And then directly we are connecting to the data centers, which definitely will complement each other. Right? That depends upon your, uh, uh, see the biggest challenge we have is the security. If you're integrating, then integrating is establishing a trust, right? Now, how you're going to establish a trust? Because that's a point in order to ensure the distributed trust, uh, people were talking about uh, the blockchain. Now, how, how it is going to happen in the sense, because if I want to know this one, for, for example, now you take a Zigbee node. This is a Zigbee node. These are the Zigbee nodes we have. Now these Zigbee nodes will be connected to the uh, the edge router. We call them as a broader router, or we can call them as a Zigbee coordinator. Now this is Zigbee coordinator is one network, and then we have one more network, and then we have one more network, and these are all edge nodes. Now what I'm doing here, I'm establishing a blockchain here. So that definitely whatever the node is connected, this all this fellow should also understand. Whatever it has been there, this means I want to ensure the transparency of these nodes because there's a lot of research work is going on. Now I'm establishing this fellow will maintain the blockchain information. Blockchain means how many number of nodes have been connected here, right? How many number of nodes are coming? How many number of nodes are leaving the network? Whether they're connecting to the cloud. So, and this is a cloud we have. And these are the edge nodes, edge nodes, and they're forming what a chain, a blockchain. They'll contain the information. So a distributed trust can be established if you introduce a new technology here, madam. Sangeeta Priya, madam, you are able to get it. Professor, sir, you got your answer. Any doubt regarding that? Oh. 
The next one is the application level we have. Uh, this application level means we are making a data ready, which you're going to have it. Uh, what we are going to do, we will try to have, we can, um, certain application can control, some, certain application can be mobile applications, certain applications can be business and intelligence application, which we can have it. So the data abstraction will be, uh, will make the data ready uh, to the end users. So some applications will focus on uh, uh, devising the data. Some will focus on controlling the devices. Some will focus a combination of device and non-device data, which is going to have it. And some will have a mobile applications depending upon, sorry, depending upon your uh, specific applications, uh, you can use a particular um, IoT devices for that. So these are the different types of applications we have. So we'll try to see with an example quickly with uh, whatever we studied with the different levels of uh, IWF model, IoT world reference model. We have a devices. And then for sending and receiving the information with that, we have network, we require network connectivity. And after that, we are going to use, we are going to process the data, we are going to transmit the data, we are going to filtering the data to make it better ready. And we are going to send to the cloud, cloud storage. We call them as a data storage or accumulation. And before landing into the um, Cloud. And then what we are going to do, we are going to process the data and we are making the data ready with the data abstraction. And then the applications can access this uh, data for further decision making. Uh, definitely they can process it, they can uh, uh, provide it, and people can view it, the data for efficient decision making. So my question to the participants, uh, my, my question to the participants, uh, to device and device connectivity, uh, I, I, I can go to the application straight away. You're able to get my. Yeah, see, for example, you have a Raspberry Pi kit, you have a Wi Fi model. And directly you are sending, you are creating an application in your mobile, in a laptop, and you can get the data. Is possible or not? Yeah, it's possible, sir. Other than sir, it's possible because uh, we don't have any restriction. There is a flexibility is there in this reference model. If you want to integrate that particular technology, yes, you can have it. Right? If, if you, through only these two are important components we have, right? If you want to add any edge device, yes, to filter here itself, we can do it. Right, without storing into the cloud directly, I can send to the application, or without sending, I'm going to send to the abstraction also. So we have a flexibility to add or to integrate it, and we can do it. So that's why this reference model will give a lot of clarity for the IoT devices who want to integrate something. And here also, people are talking about a software-defined radio, a software-defined network. How we can have such type of things. Okay, this is about the reference model we have. Right now, this is an example, overall example, how we have, we have different types of networks like Zigbee PAN coordinator, six low PAN, Bluetooth low energy swap network. So, uh, what are the new topics which we're going to have instead of research in cyber security? Now, if you see the success of IoT, if you go back to this one here, now, if you talk about with respect to cybersecurity, it's, a, it's more vulnerable. The success of IoT is purely depends upon six important parameters, right? Uh, like if we require safety, protection, security, privacy, these are all success for the IoT. Because, see, if you, if you see, the IoT devices are very tiny in nature and easily theftable. And identity can be easily theft. If you see the showdown search engine, right? Right. If, if you see the Shodan search engine, once the device is connected to the internet and it will be available to ev everyone and they're more vulnerable also. Right. So what we require is a cyber security with respect to IoT is purely depends upon its security parameter. What are the platform we use? So we require device security, network level security, edge computing security, cloud security, right? Um, the data processing with privacy issues and then application security need to be provided. Now, Providing or ensuring end-to-end -end authentication or end-to-end -end encryption in such devices is very, 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 very challenging. 
So people were talking about now uh, lightweighted the blockchain technologies, which they can provide a lot of identification. Blockchain can be used as for the identification. A blockchain can be used uh, for uh, uh, authentication. A blockchain can be used uh, for uh, storing the data. So th they are applying the alternative solution uh, to the IoT. Now, when it comes to another uh, part, which I want to tell you, uh, where the machine learning and deep learning related to these statements, as I already told you, we required machine learning and deep learning here also. We required machine learning and deep learning principles here also. We required machine learning and deep learning principles here, here as well as here. So therefore, if you see, IoT requires three important technologies we can have, it, apart from cloud and uh, cloud mandatory big data processing and this, but we require cybersecurity, AI principles is mandatory for the event for the IoT in order to handle the dynamic data. Uh, you got it, uh, sir? You got my um, the answer which uh, you asked me question. Okay. Right now we have a network. That's why we use it here. And then we have a gateway. ZB coordinator, broader router, Bluetooth hub, and edge routers will be there. Now what we call them as what? These are the edge devices we have. And then these are the fog devices we can use it. And this is a network connectivity. With through network connectivity, we are going to have it. And then we have a cloud, cloud infrastructure, which we can have it. And then we have a data, a big data processing. If you see here, the security will come in as which authentication, registration access, where we can introduce a blockchain based cloud computing, right? Or we can use a blockchain here also, right? Here also we can use blockchain. Uh, we can use internet blockchain for assigning the IP addresses also. Public blockchain, we can use it. Internet blockchain, we can have it. So therefore, a the lot of a lot of work is currently is happening for the security aspect also for the IoT. Uh, thanks to the researchers for doing their excellent research work, right? We have big data analysis for privacy issues, which you're going to have it, and then applications. So this is the overall uh, architecture which you're going to have. It. Okay. okay. Uh, before I proceed uh, to the protocol architecture, if I want to implement it, uh, do you have any doubts regarding the previous uh, uh, session? Please let me know. You have any doubts here? Okay, right. Now, what we are going to see, if I want to implement something, I require a protocol architecture. If you see network of things, which is a very complex one. If you see computer network also, it is a very complex one, which we'll use. Now, what we have is that we have a seven level model, which you're going to have it. Now, this is seven level model, which we're going to use it here. Uh, this seven, uh, we have a physical devices and controllers, right? We call them as what objects and connectivity. We call them as an object abstraction and then service management, then application and then business layers. So seven layer models uh, in business level in industrial IoT, we call them as a five layer model. The objects and object abstractions are called as what infrastructure protocols, we have. infrastructure protocols, and then service discovery protocols we have. And then we have what application protocols we have, right? So four different classifications of, of, of protocols which we can. Use. If you want to know, if you take any Raspberry Pi kits uh, or Dino kit or mobile field communication or Zigbee network or Bluetooth network, any 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 uh, any network we have. So the first one is if if you see physical devices with uh, LTE advanced uh, RFID tags, uh, 8.0.1.15.4. Uh, Personal network, especially for low-range uh, networks, we have Z-Wave is another technology we have. 
on top of that, we have a data link layer, which makes use of 802.15.4, right? 802.15.1 is Bluetooth, 802.15.4 is just used for the low, low range wi uh, wireless personal area network. These devices are called as what? Network technologies, the network technologies. Then above that, we have an interesting one because up to now we have we have come across network is a single layer, but in IoT network is a two layer model. I mean, we have a network layer and then we have a network. So we have a network layer and network encapsulation layer we have. This layer is network encapsulation is like something like, because uh, see, I'll give a small example. Now we know that IPv6 uh, a packet, it can uh, handle, assume that uh, it can handle 1248 uh, bytes, right? If you take uh, Bluetooth or uh, Bluetooth or Bluetooth low energy, it can handle only 127 bytes or 127 bytes Bluetooth low energy. Now, when we are sending the data from the upper layer to the lower layer, only it can handle 127 bytes. That maximum transmission unit or min minimum maximum transmission unit is 101248 uh, bytes. Now we require a lot of fragmentation and reassembly. We have it, right? Uh, of course, uh, if, if you take it uh, 32, 32 bytes, it can be handled if it is. Uh, uh, now, what we require, we require a lot of fragmentation need to be performed, right? Now, how to handle that? So, there's a encapsulation layer called a six low pan is an encapsulation layer, which is an adaption layer, which is introduced explicitly to handle for IoT devices. We have it is IPv6 so low power personal area network we have. Okay. So that is we are using in the data encapsulation layer with respect to. Uh, uh, distance and routing layer is nothing but uh, RPL or uh, routing protocol for low power and lossy networks which you're going to use it and the transport layer unfortunately we are not using a TCP because of the um, limitations we have in TCP currently for the IoT devices we use only UDP right these are the internet protocols all these network technologies along with the internet protocols we call them as what objects or object abstraction and these are called as what infrastructure protocols the next one is service discovery protocols. We can use lots of multicasting domain name service. Service discovery mechanisms can be applied here as a service discovery protocols. And above that, what we are having, we are going to have a web application web transfer protocols with uh, uh, with a lot of classifications. Uh, like uh, we are can we can use something if you want to implement like here. We can we can still implement uh, in reality. Okay. So if we take an example of that, we have a Raspberry Pi kit, Arduino kit, mobile field communication, Bluetooth low energy, MQTT with sensor network, Zigbee networks, right? All these things are connected to the network technologies, which we call them as what? Network technologies, they form a network. And then through some internet protocols, what we use it, you can use bus topology or Wi-Fi or through some gateway, mobile gateways, we can still connect it to the server side clouds. Now through server side clouds, uh, the, through some discovery process, and then we can use web transfer protocols. This is a way how the communication can be happen from device to device or from device to device. The connection of two different elements can be happen very effectively. Yeah, uh, very good question. I think uh, what. Uh, how can be the data security is possible now data security at what aspect? Data security at the sensor level, data security at network level, data security at cloud level, data security at edge level, or data security at the, because that's why I told you no. Uh, security uh, from uh, in IoT is uh, the biggest challenge we have. Now security need to be done at multiple level, M multiple level IP levels, and network level security means IP security need to be provided there. And when you are when process when you are processing, then security breach will come into the picture. So therefore, ensuring the end-to-end -end, uh, security is the biggest challenge in IoT. 
So therefore, we need to apply some uh, dynamic adaptive security mechanisms with respect to IoT. Uh, sensor level, yes, you can absolutely can provide hardware level security. You heard about PUF model, physical unclonable function where it can store the uh, key material, cryptographic uh, materials can be stored. And then uh, through edge, edge, edge devices, uh, we can uh, still access uh, to the sensor level. There's an interesting one, PUF model. Uh, which layer in network is mainly responsible for uh, efficient processing of IoT device? So there are two levels will be there. Uh, 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 you can do processing at network layer also, at object abstraction, it means network inspection can be done. And the edge computing level, we can do uh, efficient processing and the cloud level. Three levels, we can do the processing. But efficient processing uh, uh, need to be done at the cloud level. Uh, already before we go to the cloud, uh, we need to do edge level so that uh, the fine grain data and uh, the uh, we are going to get uh, um, filtering can be done at the edge level so that uh, efficient processing can be done even at the cloud level also. Okay. So this is uh, a data flow in IoT environment. I request all the participants, please, you can see. The sensing level and activating level, which we can use it. And then we have two types of communication, long range communication, short range communication. We have Ziggy Fox, LoRaWAN, Zigbee, Bluetooth, near field communication. Access gateways, we can use a lot of access gateways. Infrastructure network, service platforms, we can use cloud computing, service oriented architecture, point to point network. We can have it, right? And then applications. This is a data flow which is going to happen in reality of the applications. Now, if you see this IoT protocol stack, I request the participants, please see this one. Sensor devices, we can form a Zigbee network, six low fan network, RFID tags, wireless LANs, Bluetooth, all these things can be connected. On top of that, there is interesting one called six low fan. No audible? It's not audible? I'm not audible? Audible, sir, no okay. issue. Shraddha, ma'am, please stay. Uh... Check it out your end, ma'am. Audible, sir. Yeah. Okay. Then we are going to use, see, the interesting in IoT, we need to apply a lot of mobile IPv6 mechanisms, right? Mobile IP is another challenge we have. Mobile IPv6, we need to have. Because usually, your edge devices aware of the mobility, your sensor devices aware of the mobility, your physical layer aware of the mobility, even your mobile IPv6 also need to be aware of the mobility. Therefore, your mobile computing concepts also we need to apply in this uh, in uh, this uh, IoT devices. Uh, see if the mobile node, because if, if the mobile node is the edge node and it is moving out of the transmission range, now how to still ensure the reliable data delivery? So mobile IPv6 features are also, which is a very, very, very uh, important uh, part which we need to know. Right, and then uh, unfortunately we are not using TCP, but we are using uh, UDP, but uh, um, and it's a seamless for this guy. So quickly, we'll try to see uh, the IoT of uh, the pro Yeah, yeah mo mo mobility management compulsory is required along with mobile IP. Yes, madam, correct. We have 802.15.4 in IoT. We have 802.15.4 Mac. And then here we call them as network access. And then we are going to use a six flow pan which is will not be available in TCP IP. I'll share after this session, I'll share the mail ID also. Yeah, this is a very good question. Right, see, for example, if, if you see here, we have a lot of uh, um, uh, medical devices which are being connected to. Like, for example, oximeter, uh, we have, uh, we, we have pulse uh, oximeters, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, so many um, medical uh, um, heartbeat uh, where it will be connected. All these devices uh, can, be connect, uh, can be connected to your mobile, still you can get the real-time data. Only thing is you should be aware of that, whether these, uh, whether this information will be uh, sent to the doctor for further processing is the biggest challenge we have. Definitely IoT technologies uh, we can use in this pandemic situation, but only thing is we need to have a lot of integration need to be connected and the data need to be done at this level. 
actually very soon within six months you're going to see a lot of iot devices medical devices will be at your home yeah uh, we have rpl and then uh, we have ipv4 ipv6 and then we have udp uh we are going to use uh, it say for example sir, sir somehow yeah. your uh, ppt have uh, madam please uh, come come once again i'm not getting you madam. your sharing have been stopped sir can you please share Stop. again yeah oh, sir. Now, madam, it is okay. Uh, yes, sir, it's coming. It's coming, no? Yeah. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir, it's okay, sir. Fine. Sir. Now, what we are going to have is, see, for example, we have an oximeter. Now, in the in this pandemic situation, uh, if you if you take it, if your oximeter is connected to your mobile, and once it is con continuously it is happening, we need to get a beep sound if the oxo if the oxygen level, um, saturation oxygen level is nine less than ninety four percent, you should get a beep sound. So immediately you need to alert a message uh, to the doctor or nurse so that uh, very uh, they can take a preemptive pre measures. So therefore, a lot of things are there. But after this pandemic situation, definitely a lot of research work will be evolved uh, for the undergraduate students or graduate students uh, or PG. They can start working on that, and uh, definitely it will be a good sign, um, um, which will bring a lot of researchers very close together to solve the uh, real-time problems we have. Okay. Now this is a network we have uh, wireless, uh, uh, low-power wireless internet we have. Uh, you, you see, these are all various sensors we have. Sorry, this is a various sensors we have. Low pan network we can call them as. This is an IP network, and then we are going to connect it. So, this is a sensor router. Switch low pan router will be there. All these things definitely need to come to the this router through some relay points. Through some relay points. Okay. So, this is another architecture we can have. So, therefore, finally, we need to have it. We can perform, uh, as already told you, this uh, required device to device communication, device to cloud communication, device to gateway communication, and backend data sharing. Now, what we use it, see, for example, this is a device to device communication. Right? One manufacturer has a light bulb and another one is light switch. We require a network like Zigbee, Z-Wave, or Bluetooth in order to provide a communication. This is called as a machine to machine communication model in IPO. This this is one type of classification. The other type of classification is device to gateway communication. So from temperature sensor through local gateway and I'm going to send to the application, right? Or through carbon monoxide sensors so through gateway, I'm sending to the service provider. So this is another level called as a device to gateway model we have. It. The third category is something like if you see, we have a Zigbee network, we have a six slope and network. We have a gateway through IoT gateway. I'm sending a lot of a lot of devices are part of this category to form a network. Okay. Yeah, is there, sir? But you need to serve uh, for testing the uh, testing tools. Testing tools in the sense you want to apply some. Um, uh, um, after getting the data, you need to apply. What is what is the question? I'm not getting you. Okay, this uh, yeah, I'm not getting you, sir. Please, can you mute and you can ask me if required. So, what we are going to use it here, uh, eight not upon fifteen point four gigahertz uh, radio frequency system with the six low pan network, which we can use it, and uh, still we can uh, can uh, connect it to the RFID based sensors which are used, right? And the third category is the device to cloud communication, which we will have it directly. We are going to consent the data, and we are going to send it to the service uh, providers. This is a device to cloud uh, uh, communication model we have. And uh, so this is a way how the device communication model will be used, uh, which we can be connected. And final one is the backend data sharing model. Which you have backend data sharing model means from light sensors to the one service provider. From this service provider, I'm going to send to the other service providers. 
This is a way of uh, so four four level of communication models we can use it. One is device to device, device to cloud, device to gateway, and then backend data sharing model. These th all these things need to have some proper integration. For proper integration, we require what IoT architecture. Okay. But uh, do you have any doubts here before I go into the challenges of IoT before I end the session? Participants regarding this previous slide. Officer has asked some. Yeah, right. Okay, no problem. Now, if you see any key requirement of the IoT platform, whatever we have, though the IoT is good enough, uh, the intelligent and dynamic, because we know that it's a dynamic in nature, intelligent. IoT is known for distributed as well as decentralized, and it's scale large, and it generates a real time value. But of course, the success of this, the success requirement of any platform. Is purely depends upon this security and privacy. If security and privacy is not there, then IoT will not be a successful story. Of course, there are other challenges are there that challenges we are going to have. See. Now, what is actually have is IoT challenges we have in the sense. The first one is the connectivity challenges, as I already told you. It's not that much easy like what are we are saying. A lot of connectivity issues. As I told you, security, performance, and scaling factor, longevity. So it may, we don't know how much uh, time that the sensor node will be alive, alive, and then when it is sending the data and when it will go into the sleeping mode. So uh, this, uh, usually they are unreliable network. We need to know about the uh, longevity. Hyperconnectivity is another issue. Privacy is another issue. Proprietary ecosystem because uh, we cannot use all our open sources. Even proprietary ecosystems also need to be considered. Then legacy devices, which we are going to use it. And IoT devices are known for transparency. Why transparency? Means once it is connected to the internet, definitely every device will be visible to the user, to the other users. So security breaches will be there. At the same time, transparency also be ensured. But we need to uh, have uh, how to ensure the transparency without compromising the security and privacy. Standards we have, constraints were there. Zero configurations need to be considered because we cannot update continuously whatever we require. Okay, these are all uh, some of the challenges of IoT. So quickly we can say because IoT is going to give a new oil to the because it's going to generate a new data, which is a new oil. Now, challenge is what is that whether the businesses are willing to share this valuable oil, valuable data to all the people. For example, you see. Now, in this pandemic situation, COVID uh, situation, now whatever the data we have, suppose if one of the one of the patient joined in hospital where he has a lot of testing, uh, he has a lot of uh, he has undergone a lot of um, medical medically. Now, the electronic health records which has been generated in one hospital, whether that whether uh, that hospital or service provider is ready to share that data to the other hospital if you want to join in the other hospital. That's the biggest challenge we have, right? So certain things need to be considered here. So definitely uh, data will be a new soil with respect to the IoT. Now this uh, soil without a rain is equal to a data without a security. Both are same. Soil without a rain, nothing we can do without there is rain, there, is, there is no rain. Soil will be nothing. Data without a security is also similarly enough. So the success of IoT is uh, purely depends upon the trust, identity, privacy, protection, safety, and security. So six important uh, parameters which you're going to answer. So that's it uh, from my side, uh, um, uh, which has been the, there uh, uh, or to uh, you, right? Uh, if you have any doubts, uh, please uh, uh, let me uh, let, let me know. So the participants now the platform is open for all. Uh, you can uh, raise your hand so that uh, we can unmute you and uh, you can ask the question directly, or else you can uh, uh, post your query on chat box so that sir will address the queries. 
Hope already most of the questions or queries have been addressed by sir. Uh, still, if you have any uh, queries related to your research work or uh, related to IOT, you can uh, post your query in chat box so that the sir will address uh, your queries. Yeah, safety level is very important uh, in these type of devices, uh, Patil, madam. Uh, um, uh, uh, see here, because the safety of the people, safety of the devices need to be there and service also need to be provided without harming anyone. So that's a very, very important uh, part which you're going to have it because the tiny devices are made up of uh, hardware. Uh, the safety parameter will be uh, very, very important because they're getting uh, easily drained and uh, easily getting heated. Now, how to ensure the uh, uh, safety measures uh, uh, with respect to a large number of devices that need to be considered. Uh, of course, you see, when we talk about sir, IoT in the sense with respect to wireless only, it will be more rather than wired. We are not talking about a wired network here because a wired network, a lot of infrastructure. Uh, if, if you take it, there is a lot of uh, Classification is there within wireless networks itself. Uh, if, if you take it, uh, you, your infrastructureless networks like uh, Wi-Fi or cellular network, they are in wireless in nature. Now there is no question of wired now. When we talk about IoT, very less. Only legacy uh, proprietary devices. If you want to connect it to the IoT devices, yes, you can connect it. But still, uh, when we talk about IoT, majority of the IoT devices are in wireless in nature. You got it now, sir, I did answer. Reliable, see, uh, IoT are unreliable network, no doubt in that. But our main motto to provide a connectivity or reliable network is the biggest challenge we have. That's a research work that we need to work it out on that. How to ensure reliable or unreliable network? A six low band is one example of that. Six low band protocol is one example of that. No, no, no. See uh, how it will be limited in nature in coverage. Uh, we, we have a lower band. Now, see here, uh, you know, multi hub out of networks, isn't it? Yeah, WiMAX is used, sir. WiMAX is used. WiMAX uh, started using lower band is used. Ziggy Fox is used for larger distance. You know, no multi hub out of networks. Multi hub means uh, with the help of the intermediate nodes, still we can cover the long, uh, longer range distances. Multi hub out of networks, multi hub networks we can call them as. Your mesh network is something we can get peer to peer mesh network can be connected for a larger distance. Yeah, Kavita, I'm trusting IoT devices is the biggest challenge now. Now, how to trust a device? That's a point. Uh, that, that's why people, we see, trust in the sense, for example, uh, like your coordinators has given a trust to all the KLU faculty to join. Uh, initially, uh, because of the trust, he has given the link to all the members so that they can join. Later, the people will be misused. So, for example, they send the link to the other people. Now, how, I, how can I trust you? As who has forwarded that link to the other person? So, uh, to overcome this type of problems, definitely uh, IoT devices with larger in nature, a lot of registration, a lot of identification, Identification of the MAC address, identification of the IPv6 address, who is assigning that, all these things, uh, there are some challenges are there with respect to the trust management. Identity management is there and a lot of work is happening on that. I think uh, uh, we worked on one work called uh, identity uh, management, uh, distributed based identity management for blockchain for the IoT. We worked it and we were, uh, my undergraduate students, they did on that work. Uh, it's a, uh, because we can easily identify what of device it is and how trust or level which we can have it. Yeah, it's possible, madam, but a lot of research work is happening there on the trust management level. 
uh, in case of uh, wireless itself, I'm talking about multi-hop, multi-hop wireless network. For example, you see, this is one range we have. This is another range we have. This is another range we have. This is another range we have. Now, from this node to these nodes, whatever we are going to have it is, right? I'm forming a network here. I'm taking the help of the intermediate nodes to form a, la a larger network. Uh, so this is this covers a larger range, la a, la a larger range, which are, we call them as a multi-hop networks, multi-hop mesh networks. We can call it. This. Uh, it re resembles like TCP IP, sir. TCP IP with more levels of more stack of layers. Right, sir. sir. Uh, in uh, robot, sir, it is. Uh, yeah, it resembles like TCP IP. Has already told you the difference between the uh, IoT, but uh, it uses multiple stack layers. Multiple uh, technologies will come into the picture. One of uh, one 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 of the stack of layers is TCP IP. Like from uh, objects and object abstractions will be connected to the cloud. Up to cloud, we use TCP IP. From there, again, we use service management protocols, the service discovery protocols for that. Yeah, my my lady. This is my. Yeah, there's so many um, tools were there uh, to find the security, the security metrics uh, with respect to testing tools for security metrics were there. Their uh, literature is there. Uh, if required, I'll send a link to you. Yeah, wireless sort of network. Yeah, man. I have forwarded my mail ID. Please verify it. Okay. It's address. It is address. Yeah, it's not there. I forwarded. I forwarded. Uh, Surya, please check it out. Yeah. Sir, as we believe that uh, Dr. Suresh Babu sir committed to high standards for the session and approach you are anticipating to the users are intense and the subject you are introducing were very impressive to the audience, sir. So I thank Dr. Sunil Babu sir for the immense guest talk in your busy schedule and the started the time for our participants, extended this explanation very clearly and uh, engaged a number of the queries from the participants. We thank for the entire session, sir. Thanking you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Actually, I'm, uh, I uh, suffered from uh, uh, tested false two, and from last ten days, I'm not feeling well. Not feeling well in the sense, uh, yeah, uh, I tried my best. Maybe my voice, maybe in the middle, a uh, little bit low, and uh, maybe not be confident. Uh, sorry for the participants uh, in this regard, but I tried my best uh, to make it uh, session more interactive. And the participants were very keen. Uh, they are very interested, very interactive. They are responsive. Um, I thank each and every participants uh, for uh, bearing me these two hours. I thank personally uh, the coordinator for uh, uh, inviting me to share my knowledge. Okay, thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. And participants thank tomorrow, ma'am, we will introduce tomorrow's uh, this person. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you so much, Suresh, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. May I tweet now? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, you can announce tomorrow, sir. Yes, Dear participants, we have uh, tomorrow uh, one more session on data handling and data visualization using Python. The resource person is Dr. Uh, B. Nagaraju, sir, he is assistant professor from Department of uh, CSE, NIT, Nagaland, India. 
so tomorrow again we can uh, come back and meet here at uh, 10 o'clock 10 to 12 the session is going to be engaged uh, thank you for participation and active involving queries uh, clarification etc uh, thank you everyone